Hi, everybody. Welcome to the official webinar of the sixth annual Save the Frogs Day. My name is Dr. Kerry Krieger, coming to you live from Berkeley, California, where Save the Frogs is headquartered. And I'm very happy to be able to talk to you today about Save the Frogs Day, what it is, what we've done in the past, and I prepared this presentation, especially for today, and I think you'll see that what we've gotten happening on Save the Frogs Day is pretty amazing, and I think that this slideshow sums up pretty well what the Save the Frogs movement is all about. Basically, what I did was just put together all my favorite photos from previous Save the Frogs days, and I'll talk to you about some of the events that have taken place why they take place. And I will definitely save some time for questions at the end. So enjoy the presentation. For any of you who don't know me, that's me. And so today is the sixth annual Save the Frogs Day. I conceived and um, have been working on Save the Frogs Day all this time because I think it's our best means of getting society educated about frogs and getting the word out and most importantly getting people involved wherever they are on the planet. So my goal with Save the Frogs Day is to provide people with educational materials, ideas on how they can take part, inspiration to go out into their communities and do something beneficial for amphibians. and. At Save the Frogs, we coordinate that and help people achieve their own personal frog-saving goals. Uh, today, we've got at least 140 educational events happening in 23 countries, most likely more events than that that people have not yet registered. So we'll have an event total soon, but it's a lot of people, uh, well over 10,000 people being educated by our Save the Frogs volunteers today. And if any of you are in California, or if you know people in the San Francisco Bay Area, our activities at the Save the Frogs Education Center begin at 2.30 p.m. today, and we'll have activities for kids and uh, several presentations as well going all day long. And I want to thank all the people who made Save the Frogs Day 2014 possible. We had over 140 supporters who contributed over $7,000 that allowed us to fund our events in Ghana, Tanzania, India, Mexico, Nepal, and Bangladesh. And also Nature's Path and Viro Kids Serial, who gave us a $10,000 grant uh, for several of our programs, including Save the Frogs Day. So I started Save the Frogs Day in 2009, and we had 41 events take place in 16 countries, including this event in Bangladesh. And based on that turnout, I could tell that Save the Frogs Day had a lot of potential because back then we had a very small mailing list, uh, not much funding at all not many volunteers, but we still got events happening in 16 countries. So I focused in on uh, growing Save the Frogs Day and spreading the word and getting people active. The next year we had 104 events in 21 countries. And the third annual Save the Frogs Day, 146 events in 22 countries. 2012 we had over 200 events in 39 countries. Last year, the largest day of amphibian education in the planet's history, with over 270 events that directly reached at least 17,000 people. So today's Save the Frogs Day 2014, and I'm looking forward to being able to post up all kinds of amazing photos and stories from today's events. If any of you out there listening 
held your own event, make sure to send the photos to photos at save the frogs.com so that we can get those online and share them with the world. So basically, I'm going to show you photos from a lot of events that have taken place, and that'll give you a good idea of the type of things that people do on Save the Frogs Day, and hopefully inspire you to hold your own Save the Frogs Day event the last Saturday of April 2015 for the seventh annual Save the Frogs Day. So one event that I ran was a rally in Washington, D.C., in 2011 at the steps of the US EPA. And we had about 40 people show up to uh, protest or rally at the EPA to ask the EPA to ban atrazine, a harmful herbicide that causes immunosuppression, uh, hermaphroditism, and even complete sex reversal in male frogs at concentrations as low as 2.5 parts per billion. We marched through D.C., went to the White House, and the EPA invited me to speak to their Office of Pesticide Programs a week later, and I delivered many petition signatures to them. I've since been back to the EPA on several occasions, and they have not taken any action to ban atrazine, but we're still on top of them. And... Uh, the next time there is a public comment period, which I think will be early 2015, then I will definitely let all of you know, and hopefully you can send in your letters or even better show up in Washington, D.C. to speak up for the frogs. In Ghana, we have an international branch in Kumasi, Ghana. And we have five university chapters there, and they've been doing an amazing job uh, getting those universities involved and getting those local communities involved saving frogs. And I know that there's a lot taking place there today as well. So these are some of uh, the events at the universities, getting the students educated about frogs. There's also been parades, this one in northern Ghana where they eat a lot of frogs. So these people are wearing say no to frog meat t-shirts and marching through the streets of the city to raise awareness for the frogs. A last year, Save the Frogs biologist Michael Starkey was in Ghana, gave a field methods course and helped out with a lot of the Save the Frogs Day events and helped get a soccer team going in a village where they collect a lot of frogs to use as bait for fishing. So soccer is really popular in Ghana. So having a Save the Frog soccer team raises a lot of awareness in the community. So school in Atiwa. Atiwa is the home of the critically endangered Togo slippery frog. And we're working on getting the Atiwa Hills protected as a national park to protect that frog and other frogs that live there and the huge amount of biodiversity in that area that's under threat from habitat destruction, uh, such as mountaintop removal, mining, as well as people eating the frogs. So we're working to educate those schools around there so that they can spread the word to their families. Uh, Bangladesh, we've got lots of activity going on. Uh, Neural Islam, who is on this webinar, is coordinating all those events. And this is a parade that took place in Chittagong, And they are quite good at holding big parades through the cities and coming up with some pretty cool looking frog art, getting local schools involved. I think this year they're holding a field expedition for university students so that they can get uh, some more amphibian knowledge and therefore be able to better spread the word. And this is a photo I just received this morning from uh, their Save the Frogs Day events that just took place at Jagannath University. Uh, we have a lot of scientists who take people out to show them frogs in their uh, natural habitat to get people um, familiar with what's in their community. And because many people have never seen frogs 
or certainly not knew what they were when they were looking at them um, because people don't get outside enough. Nepal, we have uh, several groups holding Save the Frogs Day events. This was the first national seminar on frogs that they held. And I'll have some more photos from Nepal later. There's a parade in South Korea at a site where they help protect this uh, wetland that's right nearby from having skyscrapers built on it. Florida, they got the good weather down there. So these people were out there removing weeds and got about a thousand pounds of weeds removed to help oxygenate the water and provide better habitat for the uh, native wildlife, including the frogs. We've had frog legs protests in several states at restaurants where they serve frog legs and refuse to stop. And the restaurants often call out the police, but the police are always on our side. Not only because frogs are cool, but because we have freedom of speech and people should exercise that freedom and get out and speak, speak up for the frogs. It's a university group in Uganda who held a Save the Frogs Day event a couple years ago. Texas Tech University set a Guinness Book of World Records for the most people wearing frog masks in one place at one time. 700 people. So that did a great job educating the uh, Texas Tech University students and also getting a lot of news publicity, which is one great thing about Save the Frogs Day, is it's a great way to get the word out. Seattle, we held two Save the Frogs Day 5K events to raise awareness for the frogs and to raise funds for the frogs. Uh, this event in 2012 I was at and I gave a presentation on amphibian conservation and three other biologists did as well to help educate the 260 runners who showed up. Yosemite National Park has held some Save the Frogs Day events in partnership with the National Wildlife Federation, who we're very happy to have as partners. And Ranger Rick was on hand to celebrate Save the Frogs Day with us. In Mexico, we've got events happening in uh, several cities. Here's one that took place in Tabasco and Mexico, another country big into soccer, football. So using that to help get the word out about the frogs. In India, um, our volunteers, especially in Rajasthan, have been holding lots of events, but we've also got stuff happening in uh, Coimbatore, Mizoram, and several other cities, and they get pretty creative with the frog masks. All these kids drew frog art at their school for Save the Frogs Day, and lots of presentations to the students in the schools. Italy is holding about seven events this year in different cities, and they make good use of frog art to get the kids educated and uh, take people outside to show them frogs in their local communities. I really like this photo from Pakistan because I think it uh, exemplifies how uh, widespread our movement is and how many different types of people are involved. Pakistan, uh, girl guides going out into their community to educate people about frogs. Here in California, this school went out on a bullfrog search to remove the non-native species and help out the local wildlife. So this kid got a big bullfrog. So they're getting rid of those and helping the native amphibian populations recover. San Francisco City Hall, we held an event 2011, a rally, uh, and about 100 people showed up to call on the city to stop draining the Shark Park wetlands and to turn the management of the land over to the National Park Service. Currently, the city is 
draining the wetlands to create dry land for a publicly funded golf course. And in doing that, they're killing endangered California red-legged frogs that depend on the wetlands. So on Save the Frogs Day, this politician here, John Avalos, pledged his support. He put in legislation uh, to protect the wet wetlands. It passed three times, but the mayor of San Francisco vetoed that legislation. Uh, recently, we've been back to City Hall, and the San Francisco Board of Supervisors voted to continue draining the wetlands without doing an environmental impact report. So on Earth Day, four days ago, we uh, filed a lawsuit against the city of San Francisco. So we'll have updates for you on that as the lawsuit progresses and uh, hopefully get the city to clean up their act and evaluate the impact of what they're doing and come up with alternatives. I went down to Columbia last year to help them save the frogs and celebrate Save the Frogs Day with them in about four cities in Columbia. And they've got lots of cool frogs and a lot of biologists interested in frogs. And I spoke at uh, about four of the universities to tell them all about Save the Frogs and get them um, excited about our style of amphibian conservation, which is primarily going out into the public, uh, talking to students, talking to politicians, standing up for the amphibians in new ways and getting lots of people involved, like right here in Florencia, Colombia. And our students in Cali, undergrad, Save the Frogs Cali. I've sent them about $1,500 in awards, and they've been going out to uh, villages surrounding Cali near critical frog habitat, educating the students about frogs. And these are places where a lot of frogs are being uh, taken out of the wild for use in the pet trade, and also a lot of habitat destruction at critical frog habitat. Some undergraduates in uh, Santa Marta and their professor takes them out monitoring for chytrid fungus in endangered Adelopus frogs. The Adelopus is a very endangered group of amphibians. About 67 of the 110 species have likely gone extinct due to chytrid fungus. This is a frog that tends to live in the mountains and streams, which is exactly where the chytrid fungus causes most of its problems. And that was me last year on Save the Frogs Day at the largest science museum in uh, Antioquia in Medellin. And I also went out to this school to help them celebrate Save the Frogs Day and spoke to about 500 of their students. And this is a cool frog pond that they built behind their school. It had frogs breeding in it. As I said, in Nepal, we've got a lot happening at different cities and uh, teachers going out to schools in Nepal. Nepal, they have a lot of habitat destruction, a lot of trees getting chopped down, uh, people eating frogs, using them for medicinal purposes. an event in Nigeria where we sent an award to last year to help them out with their Save the Frogs Day program. Philippines has a very active group in Benguet and I know that they just celebrated their Save the Frogs Day and I sent them a uh, audio message to play for their group. Some students in Davis, California who get together on Save the Frogs Day and hold a little benefit concert for the frogs. Some cool frog art in the United Kingdom. It's our group in Portugal. Avalon Tyson in Florida holds events each year. They get a whole lot of people 
and she's been great for spreading the word about frogs. She's spoken on at a TEDx conference. She gets on the radio all the time and uh, meets with politicians and does a really good job, not just on Save the Frogs Day, but all year round for getting the word out through her organization, Conserve It Forward. It's a school in Vermont that uh, drew up some frog art on Save the Frogs Day. And this school in North Carolina, Sycamore Creeks, actually held Save the Frogs Day events every year that we have celebrated Save the Frogs Day. So I think that's pretty amazing. And I was there in December for the second time and spoke to the students there. And they've got frogs in their backyard. And Save the Frogs Day has gotten a lot of media attention. We've made front page of Le Mans, the largest paper in France. Had a two-minute spot on CNN television worldwide. And we've gotten lots of political support. Uh, myself and some of our supporters, including um, some of our young supporters, have sent letters to their local politicians. And we've gotten the governors of Virginia, North Carolina, and South Carolina to officially recognize Save Frogs Day. State of Michigan... The mayors of Washington, D.C., Vancouver, Santa Cruz, and Tampa, Florida have all recognized Save the Frogs Day. Here's the proclamation from the mayor of Washington, D.C. That's all I have for you about Save the Frogs Day. Uh, before I take your questions or tell you other things that's going on currently with Save the Frogs, I want to remind you that we have a Belize Eco Tour going June 19th to June 28th, and we still have some spaces available. It's a really incredible trip where you will see some cool ruins, meet a lot of frog-loving people, visit some beautiful rainforests and streams, see some amazing wildlife. That's Michael Starkey who's leading the trip. And you will visit some incredible Caribbean beaches. So I highly recommend the Save the Frogs Belize Eco Tour. Let us know if you're interested. And please spread the word to anyone you know who likes wildlife, frogs, rainforests, adventure, tropical beaches, waterfalls, birds, streams, vacations. Because they will have a good time. I hope all of you can jump over to Donation Station and donate to Save the Frogs. It is Save the Frogs Day, most important day for amphibians. And it would mean a lot to us and to the frogs if you place a donation and help us out. We can only get all these activities done with your financial support. So please donate. We now have a new donation system, far better than our old one. You will love it, and it lets you do recurring donations to make your life easier, to help you plan, budget, save you time in the future. You can just set up a monthly donation and forget about it. And I'm pretty sure everyone out there listening can afford $5 a month. It's just a $5 bill. So even that helps out. If you can do more, that would be great. And as you can see in this presentation, we put your funds to very good use, and to remind you, Save the Frogs Day is only one activity that we do. We've got lots of other programs going on. So that was it from what I have to say, at least to begin with. So I want to open it up to any questions or comments, statements, thoughts. Anyone out there have anything they'd like to say? You can just raise your hand and then I will unmute you, or you can chat in your question if you have anything. Is Neural out there? Neural? Hi, Neural. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. How's it going? Yeah, everything's fine. Today, I it's a big day, and... Um, Pro events 
uh, already successfully arranged in Bangladesh and uh, Onimesh have uh, successfully led the field expedition in Silhet and uh, I just come in my room and now I'm preparing, I'm listening to you and uh, I'm really thankful to set the props and all the donors to make it uh, possible in Bangladesh for this uh, set the props day event and sixth annual set the props day event and thank you. Okay, awesome, thank you. Yeah, so that was Neural Islam of Save the Frogs Bangladesh. We sent them a Save the Frogs Day award, $2,680 this year to help out with their, I think, five events across Bangladesh. So he thanks you, all the donors. And anyone have any questions, comments, anything you want to say, and I can unmute you. Let me see. Uh, Hi, Neural, did you have something else to say? Yeah, actually the events are uh, more than five, but uh, finally the event is six events. Okay. Nowadays. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. All right. Yeah, thank you. And yeah, everybody, if you go, uh oh. If you go to our website, savethefrogs.com, then right at the top, you can click this link, Save the Frogs Day 2014 event listings. And you can see all the events we currently have listed. There's a lot more events than this taking place. And we have not gotten them all up on the website, but we will continue to add them along with their photos and any kind of follow up reporting that we receive from the organizers. So you'll be able to see a ton of cool photos up there pretty soon and you can always get to that page just by going to the save the frogs day page and then if you scroll down a little bit you'll be able to see all the years of save the frogs events and stories and photos summaries from those events so i don't it sounds like there's not any other questions i just want to update you on a couple save the frogs happenings that we've been up to uh, one thing is we have some legislation that's working its way through the state to make the california red-legged frog our official state amphibian and this is important because not only does having the legislation go through all the politicians, educate the politicians about frogs and the plight of the red-legged frog, especially. It will get red-legged frogs in front of tens of thousands of students because many students, and I remember doing this myself, when you're in school, you research your state wildlife, your official animals. So a lot of students will learn about the red-legged frogs from this. And also, Red-legged red frogs have a lot of threats to them. Having it as the state amphibian will really help out protecting it because it'll be that much more difficult for anyone to harm the red-legged frog without uh, creating a lot of public controversy. So... Earlier this year, Michael Starkey and I spoke at this school in Salton City, California. The school had uh, contacted me a few months before that about making the red-legged frog the official state amphibian. They sent a letter to their assembly member, Perez, and he's also spoken at the school. And uh, a few weeks ago, I went up to Sacramento and spoke to the state assembly um, committee, and we won that vote and then it moved to the state assembly a few days ago and a few days ago um, we won a 52 to 8 vote at the assembly and now i think that it just goes to the senate and that's the final vote and based on the fact that it won this uh vote a few days ago 52 to 8 i think it should go through and that's thanks to the salton city uh seaview elementary school and these amazing students who came up and spoke very um, 
passionately about the importance of the legislation and the importance of frogs. And another thing that we have going on that I'm pretty excited about is that we just sued the city of San Francisco and this is our first ever lawsuit and you know I think I told you about bef that before so I won't go into that but we'll be keeping you up to date with this lawsuit and again if anybody knows people in the San Francisco Bay Area please tell them about our 2:30 p.m. event today that's happening at the Save the Frogs Education Center and also keep track of the events link on our website because we have a ton of events coming up after Save the Frogs Day. A lot of talks around here, special events at the uh, Education Center. And this is our list of events. Go check it out. And I'm going to give you one more chance to ask some questions. Anyone out there have any questions or anything that they'd like to say? Just raise your hand. Okay. Well, I'm going to call that a webinar and wish you a very happy Save the Frogs Day. If any of you ever have any questions, you can contact us. Contact at savethefrogs.com and we reply to all your emails. You can call us at one 75 frogs And that's it. Happy Save the Frogs Day. Thank you so much for attending the official webinar of the 6th annual Save the Frogs Day. This is Dr. Kerry Krieger, founder and executive director of Save the Frogs Day, wishing you a happy Save the Frogs Day. Bye.